you think you need to be an After Effects Pro to create animations just like this, then think again. Because in this video, I'm going to share with you just how easy it can be to create super smooth text animations just like Apple. I have a 1920 by 1080 comp here with a white solid and just some laid out black text. If you want to follow along, the exact font I'm using is Articulate CF and that's in bold, and you can find that in the Adobe Typekit. However, if you want the top secret Apple font, it's SF Pro. I'm just gonna turn on my grid here, as I have been asked about this before, but I just like to use it for alignment purposes, and that's the proportional grid under this little button here. And the first method we're going to use is just the animation of the position of our text with some masks. So I'm gonna open my position on my first text here. I'm gonna press P on my keyboard to bring that up. And I'm just going to move ahead maybe seven keyframes-ish. And we'll create a keyframe. Then I'll just go back to the start. And I'm just going to drop this by typing plus 70. And now we just have this kind of animate up. And what I'm going to do is select both of them and press F9 to easy ease them. I'm going to go to my graph editor by pressing this button here. I'm going to fit this to view with this button down here. And this is using the speed graph. And all I'm going to do is just ease out the end of this, and I want this start to be quite abrupt. So I'm just going to bring that back, and we'll see how that looks. Now, I actually want these two pieces of text to come on separately. So I'm just going to draw a mask. So to do that, I'm going to select my text layer and go up to the rectangle tool here. And then I'm just going to draw over the first word of my text. I'm then going to duplicate this layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl and D. I'm going to press M on my keyboard to bring up my mask properties, and then I'm just going to change that to subtract. And now we have two different variants, and we can see that by pressing the solo button here. And all I want to do is press U on my keyboard to bring up my properties, and that'll show me all my animated properties. And I'm just going to slide this second layer over maybe about four frames, and then I'll just drag that back on the end there as well. So now if I hit play, we have a super smooth first two words of our animation. However, if we were doing this for the whole animation, it could get quite time consuming. So let's talk about an easy way to do just that uh, using more words, because imagine we had five, six words on this. It, it could take a really long time. And instead, I'm going to introduce you to range selectors. So range selectors can be used to animate an offset across our text. Now to add these, I'm just going to open up our uh, text parameters here on this layer by pressing the drop down. I'm going to go to animate. And we're just going to add a position animator. I'm going to open this up using all the arrows. And we want to open the advanced tab as well. Now you can see all these different properties here. Now the ones we're interested in is based on, which means it will come up either character by character, word by word, or line by line. And I'm just going to leave mine on characters for this instance. Now we actually need to add some animation to this because at the moment it's doing nothing. So I want to go down to my position here. And I'm going to set that to minus 70. And you'll notice all my text move upwards. Now, we could animate this, but it's not really what we want. It doesn't move the characters. Instead, we need to animate this offset position. And you'll see when I move that from 0 to 100, it moves up and down. However, we want this to be on minus 100. And I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm just going to move that back a few frames off my text. And then I'll just move forward a few more frames and set that to 100. Now, it looks really weird because we're actually under the shape and we're on square at the moment, but we want to change this to ramp up. So I'm just going to select it and select ramp up. And now our text kind of comes down instead and it looks a little nicer. Now we can't actually animate the easing by just selecting our keyframes and pressing F9. Instead, we need to use the ease high and ease low values on this. And in this instance, again, I want no easing at the start, but I want it to ease out. So my ease low, I'm going to set to 80%. And now we have this kind of silky smooth text coming down. Now, obviously, feel free to play with all the timings and keyframes, your easing, all that good stuff, and get it exactly how you want it. We also want to add an opacity animator to this, but I don't want to include it with my main one. So I'm going to go up to my animate button again and select opacity. And again, I'm just going to open all of these up. I'm going to leave it as it is, as I want it on square with zero easing, and I still want it to be based on characters. And I'm gonna to go to where my old one starts with the position, and I'm just gonna create a keyframe on the offset. And I'm just gonna to go to the end of the other one, and then set that to 100 on the offset. But again, I've caught myself out, and I didn't change the opacity at the bottom here. 
So I just want to go from 100 down to 0, and now you'll see that text will fit in nicely. I actually don't like how we're missing the position here, so I'm just going to bring back this opacity one, so we can have it kind of a bit visible, but not too much. It's just very, very subtle that it kind of is coming in. So I've just dragged mine out a little bit more on the position and opacity, and now it feels much smoother. Next, let's talk about match cutting between our text to help keep things moving. Honestly, it's just one of my favorite transitions, so I had to include it. I'm going to start by animating this position of my old text uh, before we go into the new one. So I'm just going to press P on my keyboard to bring up my position and create a keyframe. And then I'll move forward 10 frames by holding Control and Shift and pressing my right arrow once. And then I just want to bring this down and maybe we'll do plus 70. Then I'm just going to select them both and press F9. I'm going to my graph editor and we'll just ease those out slightly. And I want it to be quite focused on the end. So maybe bring that on a little bit. And now what I want to do is I can save myself a bunch of time here by just parenting this just like Apple layer to my original moving text, but doing it at the end of my keyframe. So it's in the perfect position. And now if I bring that back, we kind of have that nice little match cut. But I want this motion to kind of continue. So I'm going to go to the end of my position keyframe here and move back a couple frames. So I'm just going to hold control and press my left arrow a couple times. Uh, maybe we'll go around here. Looks pretty good. Just going to create a new keyframe on that layer. And if I select the right one. And I'm going to extend that out and put it near my old keyframe. And then with the, with the original end keyframe, I'm just going to bring that to the end. And there's a very subtle trick I like to do using three keyframes I've talked about in previous videos, but it just helps to keep some continuous motion just very subtly throughout our scene. And it makes things look a bit more fluid and way more silky smooth. So now along with this text change, I'm also going to change the background too. So I'm going to select my solid layer and press Control, Shift and D to split it. And then I'm just going to press Control, Shift and Y to open my solid settings. And I'm just going to set this to black or very dark gray. I don't want this to affect all my layers using that solid. So I'm going to leave that unticked and I'm just going to create new. Now, obviously, I'll just need to change my text fill color here back to white. So I'll flick that to 95. And now we have this super smooth match go in our scene. And I actually might just extend this range selector on the position a bit more. And again, just keep that flowing throughout the scene. Now we're going to add another match cut and then combine the mask technique we used with a positional change to bring on our text nicer. Now, as you can see, I've actually got the wrong color here. So I'm just going to change that to 95. Now you'll notice that this layer is already parented. And again, I could do the exact same with this layer, but I kind of want to show you just how powerful nulls can be and where they can be used if you don't want to have a huge parenting setup. So I'm just going to start by uh, scaling this layer up. So we're going to go and create a keyframe by pressing S on our keyboard to bring up the scale and create a keyframe. And I'll just move forward 10 frames and then I'll bring that up to 130. And I want this to be in line with that. So it could get a little awkward here because we're going back down and I want this to be applied to a null. So again, I'm just going to select both of these and press F9 and then we can ease them. And I'm going to do, again, a similar easing to the one we did on the other match cut. And then I'm just going to select both of those and copy that with Ease Copy, which is a free script that you can get from Ease Scripts, and it copy and paste your easing across different keyframes. I'm then going to create a new null layer by going up to Layer, New, and Null Object, or you can use Control, Alt, Shift, and Y. And I'll just call this uh, Match Cut. I'll bring this down below. And then I'm just going to copy these keyframes from my Just Like Apple layer and paste that to my null layer. And I'm just going to trim this using Alt and left square bracket so I know where it starts. And now at the start of the animation, when it's down at 100 on the scale, I'm just going to parent this layer to the null instead. Now we have that super smooth scale cut, which looks quite nice. Now you might be wondering why I've used a null for this and not just parented it. Well, we're actually going to do some position and mask changes on this, which will affect our anchor point of the layer. And if we scale and our anchor point is in the wrong place, it won't look like it's scaling from the center. So let's start by just masking our text. So I'm going to create a new mask by selecting my layer, going up to my rectangle and just masking out that two. And I actually want to set that to subtract 
And now, as you can see, my position is in the wrong place. So what I want to do is press P on my keyboard and just create a keyframe where it is. And I'll just move that over a little bit. And then I want to recenter this manually. And we're just going to have to do this by eye. But again, this is why I like to work with my grids on. I'm just going to select both of those and paste my easing to that positional movement. And now we're going to have something that looks like this, which looks nice. And it's kind of like what Apple do. And because we scaled it to the null, it doesn't scale from the wrong place. So if I didn't scale it to the null, it would scale from down here, which isn't central and it will really throw your eye. So as I want this position to move, I'm just going to press U to bring up my keyframes. I want that mask to unveil itself. So I'm going to press M on my keyboard and create a new keyframe there. And then I'll press U to just see both my keyframes. And then at this point, I just want that to be off. And we can either leave it quite dynamic looking, but I don't really like that. And you can kind of see the mask and we could obviously speed that up as well and maybe paste the easing on there. I'm not a huge fan. Instead, I'm going to select those keyframes, right click it and click toggle hold keyframe. And we'll see how that looks. Not in the right position. So we'll see how it looks if we put that in the center. And I much prefer that popping on as the text moves over. It looks much more fluid. And again, I'm just going to add the three keyframe trick to this position. So I'll just go to the end of my keyframe there and just move back a few frames. And then we'll create a new keyframe. And just move that over to the end and then bring that forward a little bit as well. And we get a bit more interest. And I could do this on the null scale layer as well. So I'll just create a keyframe there, drag that over to the end, and realign those two. And that's looking much nicer. And we're actually getting some kind of overshoot in that. So I'm just going to select my layer, go down to my graph here, and edit the value graph this time. And you can see it's overshooting. I just want to bring that ease down a tad and maybe we just need to adjust that as well and that's looking much nicer for the final piece of text we're again going to match cut using a position and then we'll add a nice little underline to finish everything off so i'm going to go and move back a few frames from my end here with control on my left arrow i'm just going to press p to bring up my position and create a new keyframe then i'll move forward 10 frames with control shift and right arrow and maybe we'll add minus 70 to this so it kind of moves upwards. I'm going to go back to my previous match cut and I'm going to copy those easing and I'm just going to paste that to this one as well. We kind of have that movement going on. Now again, I'm going to flick to white. So I'm just going to end this dark gray solid layer and duplicate my white one with control and D and then just move that over with my left square bracket. And just for organization, I'll bring that above as well. And now we have this kind of movement, which isn't really following through at the moment and doesn't look correct. So this time I'm going to copy my range selector that we used from earlier for this text. So I'm going to press U twice really fast and we can see both animators. Now in copy and range selectors, you can't just copy the selector. You need to select the whole animator. I'm going to select animator one and hold control and select animator two, press control and C. And I'm just going to paste that to uh, this layer with control and V. I'll press U to bring up all my keyframes. And again, I'll just move those back to kind of be in line with our original one. But it's animating the wrong way. And all we want to do is change the position from minus 70 to 70. But I don't really like the text coming in because it doesn't really animate like that in the other one. Instead, I'm going to open my range selectors again, and we'll need to open them further. And instead, we want to change this to words. And I'll do that for the opacity as well. And in advanced, and we want to change that from characters to words. Also going to change my easing on this one. And I'm going to add 60 to the ease high and just reduce the ease low to 60 as well. Now you'll notice it's still not very fluid and looks quite strange there. So we're going to add another parenting trick with the null and use the three keyframes again. So on my null, I'm just going to move back a few frames on this position. and. I'm going to create a new keyframe. But before I go ahead and move that, I'm just going to go to my end point here. And we're going to parent this last layer to our null with the pick whip. And then I'll just drag that end keyframe out. And we'll drag the middle one over to line up with our text offset. And now we have a much smoother movement. But I might just offset that using a little more on the ease low. And maybe we'll bring it back up to 80 and see how that looks. 
a lot of this is just kind of fine tuning with your easing values and making it look real nice. Now, what you might notice is my text isn't actually the same size anymore. And that's because when we parented it to the null, the scale doesn't get changed either. So currently the null scale is at 130. But if I press S and look at the text scale, it's down at 76. So I just want to change this back to 100. And now all our text is in that bigger style. So I just want to add a nice little underline to finish this off. So I'm going to go up to my pen tool here. And my stroke is set to 5, which is perfect. And I'm just going to draw an underline underneath the like them. And I'll add a slight curve to it to keep it a bit more interesting. I'm going to press Alt and left square bracket to trim that layer. Um, we'll just rename it with underline. I'm going to go and open this up. And under the add here, we're going to add a trim paths. So open that up. And on our end property, I'm going to create a keyframe. And we'll just move that over. And then we'll just set that to zero on our current cursor. And for now, I'll just paste my other easing values on. And we can see how that looks. It looks okay, but it could definitely look a bit more interesting. So what I'm going to do is we shouldn't have a fill on this for a start. So let's click that and set that to none. And I might actually beef this up a little bit few pixels, maybe to around eight. And then I'm just going to add an turbulent displace effect to this. So I'm going to bring up FX console, which is a free plugin I would highly recommend. And you can search for any effect. I'm just going to add a turbulent displace. And that is way too much. So let's reduce the amount to maybe about 10. And we can reduce the size as well. And it just adds that little squiggle. But we still got these end caps, which don't really look right. I'm going to go down into my shape here. And under my stroke parameter, I'm going to set that to round cap. And then I'm also going to down into taper. And we'll just change the start length a little bit. And we can also change the end width a little bit. And then add some start and end easing to this too. Just so it looks more consistent with a pen draw. And that's looking much nicer. And now if we go ahead and hit play, we have this awesome looking Apple-like text in After Effects.